Pendigo. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and, um, and thank you very much to the whips on the Labor team and to um, the speakers that I've jumped ahead of for allowing me to give my address, address and reply today. Um, this is my last week in Parliament before um, going on mat leave, so I do thank them for being generous in allowing me to leap ahead. Um, I wanted to start with the, uh, the election itself and to acknowledge all of the great supporters that we have in the Bendigo electorate and the people who put in such an effort. Um, yes, there are 151 of us that are here, uh, but we represent a very broad network of people who really do believe in our democracy. Uh, regardless of party, regardless of politics, uh, there are the true believers in all of our parties, the party faithful, who really help get behind us to support the ideas and the values. Uh, the Bendigo electorate has some of the most active ranches across the region, and I do want to pay tribute and thank all of the Bendigo Labor branches, uh, Bendigo South, Bendigo Castlemaine, Kyneton and Woodend. I particularly want to give a shout out to our president in Woodend, Pauline Brown, and our president and secretary in Kyneton, um, Eric Derricott and Mark Derricott. Uh, the Bendigo electorate is a large electorate and they have consistently helped to run our show in the south to make sure that we have not just our polling booth stars, staffed but our pre-poll staffed, uh, making sure that we are doing our door knocking, our street stalls and our letterboxing. Um, also want to acknowledge the great efforts of the Castlemaine branch and in particular Debbie Lawn. Uh, we had three pre-polls this year in our electorate, the first in Castlemaine uh, and probably the best result we've ever had at a pre-polling station in Castlemaine. Uh, every time I turned up there, there was at least four of us. Uh, um, um, and it wasn't until the last week that we actually had some opposition there. So we felt pretty good about our coverage and the conversations that we were having with voters in Castlemaine. Uh, in Bendigo, um, particular shout out to the many volunteers that helped staff pre-poll and on polling day, and also did the phone calling and the door knocking, as well as the letterboxing. In particular mention to my campaign manager, Kate, um, Sutherland, who is also uh, the chief, um, who is the office manager in our team, who took time out to help run the campaign. Fantastic people in our office that really pulled it together uh, to make sure that we had our strongest um, foot forward. Uh, the volunteers and the coordinators that we had of our volunteers. Uh, what I was really proud of was the fact that the people in Labor in Bendigo do it because they believe in it. They believe in Labor, they believe in our purpose. We have a strong campaign team and we've built a very strong brand in Bendigo Labor. Uh, acknowledge our fabulous state MPs uh, who are part of the campaign team as well. Marie Edwards, Jacinta Allen and Mary Ann Thomas. Uh, we do have a bit of a, a lock on the region where we work really hard to ensure that we're representing the community and we work closely together as a team. I wanted to pay particular mention to my friend Michael Grimes who passed away this morning. Uh, he has always been such a warrior and an advocate uh, for the people of Malden and for the Labor cause and was, even though he was starting to get quite ill, still very active in the campaign. Joanna Casey, who is very sick at the moment, again, um, for years uh, did our mobile booths in the south of the electorate uh, and this, this time took on a trainee, a mentor, because uh, she said at the time she didn't think she'd be around for the next election. I hope that she holds on, but I know she's very unwell and I'd like to give her and her family my best wishes. Uh, these are real people in real communities who believe in something and make me very proud to be their elected representative and a Labor representative. Uh, Deputy Speaker, unfortunately though, when we turned up on election day um, at a number of the polling booths, uh, not all the people there were volunteers. Um, you know, the Liberal Party had taken the unprecedented step of paying people to hand out how to vote cards. Uh, it's the first time we've seen it in our area. Um, Bendigo is a marginal seat. It's a swing electorate. In 2013, the margin dropped to 51 per cent. 
Uh, we just held on. It was a tough election. Um, to go from that election in 2013 to 2019, where the Liberal Party engaged a Labor hire agency and paid people to hand out how to vote cards, starts to really question, do people in our region support their values? And people don't. Um, the results in Bendigo really reflect that. Uh, they weren't the only one. Um, we had a number of candidates that put their hand up in this election who were um, for the Clive Palmer party or for the Pauline Hanson party. Um, we had a number of to the right of us candidates, including the Fraser Annan party, that were all working closely together. And on election day, being paid, their um, not their volunteers, but pa paying people to hand out how to vote, it's a step in our democracy that I think we should be worried about that we pay people to hand out party material. It is less about the values and the ideas and that broader social movement and more about who has money. And we saw that um, uh, play out in a number of areas and whilst parties are still doing their reviews and whilst there's some work for the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters to do, I believe that all Australians should be worried that individuals can spend $60 million on an election campaign to have an influence. Money has entered this federal election campaign like no other, other and has had an influence. Deputy Speaker, I also believe we really need to focus on the role of social media and the impact that it is having on our politics, not just in election campaigns, but all year round. Um, some call it fake news, some call it misinformation. But the problem is that when a lie is identified, when misleading information is identified on Facebook, all they do is cop a complaint. They are not bound and have not been bound to take down that misleading information. If it was in a newspaper, if it was in, a, um, if it, if it was in print, if it was on TV, there would be avenues for candidates and political parties to pursue that misleading information. Truth in advertising does occur in the mainstream media. There is a process. Sure, it could be strengthened, but there is a process. But the same does not exist for social media engines. So, Deputy Speaker, I really hope that our committee, um, the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters, really looks into the role of social media and the impact that misinformation and fake news and fake campaigning and, quite frankly, lies is having. And that's not just the impact it had on our side of politics, but on all sides of politics. We do not want to be a, a parliament that is elected because of the amount of money an individual or business interest may have. We need to be a parliament that is elected through a genuine debate of ideas, a contest of values, the people who get out there to do the grassroots campaigning to say this is our vision and our plan for Australia. In Bendigo, um, I'd like to really thank the people of Bendigo electorate. Uh, we ran a tough campaign and we work hard and we are really proud of the network that we have in Bendigo, not just the Labor network, but Labor supporters, our like-minded people. Uh, thank you for returning me again to be your representative here in this parliament for the third time and on an increased majority. Uh, we are at 59 per cent, which is a high watermark for us in Bendigo for Labor, um, similar to the result that we got in 2010. The reason why I raise that is not to crow, but to talk about why, why it is we had a positive result. Uh, that is because we had a plan. Um, Labor had a plan for Bendigo and we put, were honest about that plan. We made commitments towards community infrastructure projects that people in the region really wanted to see. Um, funding towards the airport terminal upgrade um, to ensure that we could have more flights coming in and out of Bendigo. Uh, funding for the rail trail between Dalesford and, and Hanging Rock, a great tourism infrastructure project for the south. Uh, funding to help the um, Casamay community health um, find a new home and to build a new home and to ensure that they had a place in the new Casamay health and wellbeing precinct. Uh, we committed funding to, work to help our councils build footpaths um, to the gaps that exist um, 
Deputy Speaker, some may not realise it, but in areas like Bendigo, where you've got new estates and old estates, sometimes what's missing is the footpath in between those new and old estates. The new estate only is required the developers to build the footpaths inside the new estate. So we made a commitment towards helping local councils um, build those missing links. Um, footpaths, even though it's not a federal issue, um, it's an area where I believe that federal government can play a role to help partner with local government to, de to deliver that vital community infrastructure. Just like we have roads to recovery and we have bridges to recovery, we could have paths to recovery that encourage people to be out, to be active, to be riding to school, riding to work, to be pushing strollers, um, for older people to feel safe when they're walking, making sure that we're helping our councils um, filling those missing links. And in regional communities and regional town centres, there are a lot of those missing links. Um, it's always devastating when you chat to someone who um, walks over to talk to you at a, a listening post and they've got their high-vis vest on um, so that they, you know, they're not hit by a car because there is no path for them to walk on. Uh, that happens a lot in our electorate because of the nature of the growth that we've had and the expansion of Bendigo and our towns. So I'm hoping that they're the projects that this government will adopt. Um, unfortunately, uh, Deputy Speaker, this is the first election where this Liberal National Party um, did not commit any money to Bendigo. No projects, not a dollar. Uh, no community infrastructure projects were prioritised, um, despite the lobbying and campaigning of our local councils, of our Bendigo business group, Be Bendigo, of a number of stakeholders. Uh, the Liberal Party committed zero to the electorate. Uh, yet our electorate is a similar makeup, similar demographic. Okay, we don't have the Great Ocean Road um, to Corangamite, where they committed billions. Um, so you can accuse them of pork barrelling to save marginal seats and deprioritising regional Victoria, where there is. We need our fair share of funding as well. So not one dollar was committed to Bendigo, and now we are engaged in a campaign to hopefully see this government adopt the plan that we put forward on behalf of the community for the electorate. And the government has a chance to do so in the My EFA budget coming up. They have a chance to do so um, by committing to those vital community infrastructure projects that I have outlined um, and um, the ones that I haven't that should also be considered. Uh, they include um, funding for the Latrobe University Rural, um, uh, Rural Road Trauma Hub. Um, we have a road trauma research hub at Monash University, but it focuses mainly on metro. The idea behind this is to focus on rural roads. Um, we know in particularly in Victoria, that the death toll is higher, fatalities are higher on our rural roads. So La Trobe identified the need to establish a research hub to look into that issue, to look into safety. Um, and I encourage the government and the education minister to pick up that project. Um, also encourage them to fund the um, Macedon Rangers Sports Hub uh, to hear that money is going to other electorates and they understand the importance of these centralised precincts is a bit frustrating because this project has been on the books for a while. Um, it will support not just um, sports uh, in my electorate of Bendigo, but it will also support many clubs and sports in the McEwen electorate. It actually will be based in the McEwen electorate. Um, McEwen and Bendigo share the Macedon Ranges. But we know the government, through their questions in question time, that they understand the importance of these hubs. It would be great to see the funding flow to all regions who require it. And I guess that that leads me to the, you know, the Groundhog Day experience of being back in parliament and being back in opposition. Um, so much of what we've seen already um, since this government has been re-elected is same old, same old, um, old policies old legislation, old bills uh, that they tried to get through after 2014 budget just keep coming up. It's like they've run out of ideas already and we're only in the beginning of the term. 
the attacks on pensioners continue. Uh, today, seeing more legislation which will cut pensioners, particularly uh, pensioners who may wish to travel overseas to see family, kicking them off the pension if they're overseas for more than six weeks. It's just unfair. These are people who've worked hard in Australia their whole lives and targeting a demographic of our community who have um, moved here, established their lives here, worked hard here, who may in their twilight years wish to, wish to travel um, to the country of their birth or country of family, um, only to have the trip cut short so they're not kicked off the pension. I guess it wouldn't be as concerning if we had decent investment in resources and the reversal of the funding cuts to Centrelink. We've seen again this government, since they've been back, um, attack people on New Start, people who are looking for work. One in five people on New Start are underemployed, meaning they can't get enough hours that they rely on New Start to subsidise their income. These aren't drug addicts, these aren't dull bludgers, or any other name that the government wishes to throw at them. These are people who are working, who simply can't get enough hours uh, in their industry, and that is growing. We have 1.9 underemployed Australians in this country. It's the highest it's ever been, yet no plan, no plan from this government to fix that crisis of underemployment. One in four people on Newstart are over the age of 55. Um, and if the government was serious about supporting people on Newstart, they'd meet with them and learn their stories. They'd meet people who were full-time employed and because of shutdowns in manufacturing lost their jobs and haven't been able to find secure employment since. Or they were working in a profession which they, they physically could no longer do. I've met nurses, I've met construction workers, I've met cleaners who after the age of 55, 60, they might incur an injury and they can no longer continue in their occupation. Many have retrained and tried to get work in their new field, but the jobs don't exist. This government has done nothing to address the real issue of age discrimination when it comes to employment. This government has done nothing to really support young people looking for work. They continue to tout their PATH program, the exploited $4 an hour um, internship, the Work for the Doll program, which evidence and inquiry after inquiry has proven it is not a pathway to genuine work. What they have not done is struck a compact with industry about how do we rebuild those entry-level jobs. Instead, what we see is more legislation just attacking young people, and we've seen that in their proposal that um, their trials on, drugs, on drug testing, New Start, and, um, and youth allowance recipients, um, without even engaging with young people to try and learn the barriers about why they're not in work, go straight for the political attack. It demonstrates that this government is all about rhetoric and impression and not about substance and real reform. There are some massive challenges in Australia right now and we don't have the government who can take them on. Last week alone, the statistics that came out should be the alarm bell, the wake-up call the government needs to get on with genuine and real lasting reform. The fact that one in six children are living in poverty. In some of our communities, in regional areas like Bendigo and some of our suburbs, it's 50 per cent of the children. The report went into that level of detail. Yet no plan from this government, no commitment, no outrage, no inquiry, no crisis meeting to tackle that issue. We also had the the startling statistic that one in four women go without food, a meal, at least one meal a week because they're feeding their children. Yet no genuine conversation about how we're going to tackle food insecurity and the challenges. I've mentioned the challenges with underemployment. We have problems with long-term unemployment. The economy is not fair and not delivering for all. It's time we had a government that stopped with the rhetoric and started the reform that's required to ensure that all people in our communities get a decent and fair go. Um, I hope 
that the next election comes around quickly and that it's going to be a fair contest of ideas and a fair contest on the agendas and platforms. And it's not just going to be skewed by who has the most dollars and who can have the biggest fear campaign on social media.